Hey, welcome to Electron Online, and here our next example again is a function limited by an interval from 0 to 2, including the endpoints. That's why we use the square brackets. And here again, we're trying to find the local max and min and the absolute max and min, which means we also have to find the func the values derived from taking these endpoints and plugging them into the original function to see if the y value there is higher or lower than the local max or mins we might find. All right, so let's start off by finding the derivative. f prime of x is equal to, since this is a product, we take the first times the derivative of the second, which is e to the minus x times the minus 1, because we have to take the derivative of the uh, exponent, plus the second, e to the minus x, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. So simplifying this a little bit, this is equal to minus x e to the minus x uh, plus e to the minus x. Because this is a minus here, I like to uh, flip those around and so write this as e to the x minus x, e to, oh, minus x, minus e to the minus x. And then you can factor out an e to the minus x, so this is e to the minus x times 1 minus x. Okay, that's our derivative. Now, just like with the previous examples, we're now going to set the derivative equal to 0 to solve for x. So set f prime of x equal to 0, which means that e to the minus x times 1 minus x equal to 0, which means e to the minus x is equal to 0 or 1 minus x equals 0. In this case, remember, a negative exponent is the same as a 1 over the positive exponent, like that. So if 1 over e to the minus x equals 0, the only way that can be 0 is if the denominator becomes infinite, which means when x here becomes infinite. So the solution here is that x is equal to infinity. And in this case, of course, 1 minus x equals 0. That means x must equal 1. So or x equals 1. So those are the two possibilities or the two solutions where the slope will be 0. Now, if we plug those two points back into our original equation, we'll find the corresponding y values. So with the infinity, we can say that f of x is equal to infinity is equal to infinity times e to the minus infinity. Wow, that's an interesting case. Hmm. e to the minus infinity. Wow. So what we get here is this is equal to infinity divided by e to the infinity. Now, which is bigger, infinity or e to the infinity? Hmm, we'll leave that one alone for a moment. Okay, the next one is when we have f of x is equal to uh, 1. And so when we do that, we get, back to the original equation, we get 1 times e to the minus 1. Okay, that would be equal to 1 times 1 over e. And 1 over e is about 0 0.4, 0 0.3, something in that neighborhood. So this is approximately equal to about, let's say, about 0 0.4. Okay, now let's take a look at our original equation again right here. We plug in infinity. Okay, let's try to get a better feel for this, this function right here, when x becomes large. Notice, let's say when x becomes 10, we'll have 10 times e to the minus 10 power. Now an exponent, when the exponent gets large, that will have a much greater effect than when a single number gets large. So for example, when we write in f, f of x equals to 10, this is equal to 10 times 1 over e to the 10 power. Now e to the 10 power is a very large number. 10 divided by a very large number becomes a very small number. Now what if we make this 100? So we make this 100. Now we can see that 100 times 1 divided by e to the 100 power is even a smaller number. So you can see that this very quickly converges to 0 because the denominator gets to be so large. That is hard to see when you get a situation like this. But as you approach large and larger numbers, a very large number divided by e to the very large number is, of course, virtually 0. So now we have a better idea what this function looks like. Let's graph it. So here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis. First of all, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So that's this point right there that helps us graph it. We notice that we have a maximum value at x equals 1. So when x equals 1. And now when x becomes very large, we get we, the function approaches 0 again. So asymptotically, it gets back to 0. Now, 
what is the value for y when x equals 1? Let's go ahead and plug that in here with it, and it's 0.4. So that's this point right here, so this would be about 0.4. So we can see that this function rises to a maximum value here, and then asymptotically will reach a zero value as it gets larger and larger. So that's what that function looks like. The interval is going to be from 0 to 2, so if then cut that off at 2, so then we cut it off at this value right here, and so this would be the y value when x equals 2, this is the y value when x equals 1, and this is the y value when x equals 0. So we get 0, 0, we get 1, about 0 0.4, and here we get 2, and so what would be the y value when, when x equals 2? What is e to the minus 2 power? That is roughly about 1 over 8 times 2. That's about a quarter, so about 0 0.25. These are approximate values. You can grab your calculator and get the exact value, but I'm just getting approximate values here. So you can see that that's what the function looks like in that interval. So now we can evaluate it. We know that we have an absolute maximum value at this location right here. So this is our absolute max. This is the lowest point on our interval, so this is an absolute min. And this point right here on our interval from 0 to 2 is not either a max or a min. It's a, might be able to call that a local max or local min. It's, well, we really can't call it either one because it, the function just continues on like that. I would just leave that like that, call this the absolute max, call this the absolute min, and we'll just leave that one alone. And that's the answer to this particular question. So again, notice how you need to plug in the endpoints into original function to see what the va y values will be to determine if you're dealing with an absolute max or an absolute min at those endpoints.